Hello! Welcome to Crafting Kitty. Uh, my name is Erin, and as you can see, we're set up for something wholly new. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to try my first tutorial. So, I had made this uh, Japanese knot bag from the Bag O Day tutorial. Fabulous bag. I love it. I wanted to line it. So, I looked through my things. Hi, honey. Um, went through my things and found this really cute um, remnant that I had gotten from a mystery remnant box. And I thought that might make a fun lining in there. Look at all the flowers and things. So this is what we're going to try to do. I'm going to show you how to cut the lining, sew the lining up, and then how to sew the lining into the bag using my sewing machine. This is all an experiment. I hope this works. Okay, but so I have measured this. Actually, no, I will just show you how to measure it. So you need to know the dimension of the body. Where oh, I'm wearing my tape measure. Okay, so we need oh, to know. I was wearing my tape measure. As you can hear, I have a little helper for this portion of the video. Okay, so we're gonna measure. We have 13 inches wide there, roughly, and then we have. 12 inches. So 13 by 12. And now remember when we're sewing, we need seam allowance. So I like to add an inch. So we're going to want 14 by 13 for our sizes for our panels. And you could do it. Mommy, over here now. <laughs> You're over here now. You could do it by. Um, like making an extra one and just an extra long one and fold it over, but I don't want the Yay! pattern to be that direction. So I'm gonna have to cut my my panels to fit. So we need, I've completely, I should have written it down. 13 by 12, so we're gonna need 13 by, we're going to need 14 by 13. 14 by 13. Yeah, I might. We're in this garden. <laughs> I don't know where I put my pen. I'm going to trim our selvages first because it's the lining of a bag, so it doesn't really matter. But I don't want my selvages. Rotary cutter on a self-healing mat. Wonderful. This is a game changer once I got this for my craft. So lock it with the kiddos. What am I doing? I cut the selvage off. We don't need that part. That's not the pretty part. We want the pretty part of the fabric. Okay, so we want 14 tall by 13 wide and with the pattern that will be Aaron from the future here this at this point I reverse my measurements now, but I, I will get it to work out in the end something fancier I would have ironed and gotten all this out but it's just a bag lining I am not too concerned with that so we've got 13 inches here And now we're going to look for our 14. You can't turn that on, baby. It doesn't have a... It's not plugged in. Okay, so you can see this mat has measurements. I guess I don't know if you can see. 
but the map has measurements, so you just use the grid lines to kind of square things up. So you know your cuts are pretty good. Okay, so, well, it's tilty. That's a bag lining. That, and then, I will spare you the gory details, but you need two of these. So cut a second one of these. Okay, we're back. I have my two panels. Okay, so because we're doing a bag lining, you want the printed inside. So I'm going to hold my right sides together. Right side of the fabric is the... um. The pretty printed side, wrong side is the back side, the, the wrong side. And we're just gonna roughly line that up. I've got my trusty pins here. Um, for the bag, we're gonna need to sew the three sides and leave the one side open. So just Pin up our fabric. You don't have to be super precise on this because I mean it's it's the bag lining. You don't necessarily have to worry about um you know the fit. It, it'll fudge a little bit. And then. I'm just going to put two pins there. Oops. Careful with your pins. And a final pin on the side. And a final pin. We're going to put three more pins. There, right there. And right there. Okay, set these aside. We don't need those for now. We're not going to need this guy anymore, so lock it and put it to the side. Oh, the other tools I have is just a standard scissor. You should recognize these. And then I've got my pinking shears. These are a nice to have. They're not a necessity. They just make the edges look nicer. But, so we need our trusty sewing machine. So I'm going to pull that over. I'm sorry, we're going to rock a bit here. Um, and here we are. We are in frame. Okay, so a bit about my sewing machine. This is the cheapest sewing machine I got when I just decided I wanted to start learning. It's a Singer Brilliance. It was branded Martha Stewart. I got it for like 50 bucks at Costco back in 20, um, probably 2010-ish. And it has been a workhorse. I've had to oil it a couple times. I keep it pretty clean, but no problems. This um, blue tape is just some painter's tape. I like to make those um, tie blankets and it's the perfect measurement for the hem to start doing so. That's what I do. Okay, so we're gonna use our little guide here and I need, I left half inches for the, um, Oh my gosh. Seam allowance. Okay. So this is going to be noisy. This is where I'm going to hope I can um, edit the sound out. <laughs> so here we go. So when you start the sewing machine, you want to start it. And then I'm going to reverse it a couple stitches and then go again. That locks in the beginning. So it doesn't, hey, can you please? It locks it in so the, the stitches don't come out on you later. Um, although with this bag, it's not really that important because we're going to fold it over in a, the, uh, in a couple minutes. So let us begin sewing. Oh no! <laughs> My bobbin ran out. Okay, so a little bit of sewing machine anatomy here. 
you've got your top thread and inside the machine you have your bottom thread your bobbin my bobbin ran out of thread so every time my bobbin run no it didn't my bobbin thread broke okay so we just have to re-thread the bobbin thread okay so i've got my bobbin um, i guess i'll show you um, bobbins will be different depending on your machine mine has metal if you have metal bobbins you always have to buy metal bobbins but they're pretty universal so this is the little house this is the bobbin put the bobbin in the house kind of hold it firm there's this little notch for the thread put it through here this helps you tension for loading it into the machine you put it on that side of this doohickey what i found to lock it in you pull this lever pull that lever and that holds it all in place as you put it on the spindle then you click it in place put it there where is my other thread where'd you go where's my top thread there it is okay so you gotta hold your top thread in place you can um you can use your foot pedal to do this i prefer to do it manually you can stick that through it hooks on your bobbin thread pulls it up for you and you are good to go mm -hmm. So, we begin again. Let's put this in here. Where did we end? Right there. Line her on up. Hold all the threads so they don't get sucked in on ya. And go. We don't need any more. And we will trim all of these threads as well. Oh, Maybe you one need more. Okay, seam one. Seam two. Get it lined up. Lower the foot. And snip, snip. pins in the pin house. Final seam. Line it up, lower the foot. Ah, get those out of the way before I knock them down. Okay. I'm gonna need this for a little bit. Yeah, play nicely. Some threads from the fabric. Am I still in frame? Oh, I'm not. All right, kind of. Okay, just trimming threads. Okay, and since this is going to be the interior of the bag, we don't have to worry about turning it out or anything. I am going to take my pinking shears and just trim the seam allowance. Can. First, gonna do this. Clean up the edges on all three of the seam sides. Okay, final round. Side. 
silence, silence while I am dreaming. Me? Back guy! You're back guys? Thank you! Okay, so we have this. Now, next what we're going to do is we have an extra half inch seam allowance. We are going to turn down the top, fold it down a half an inch. So that is well over a half of an inch, but let me get my trusty measurer. And let's get this to half an inch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Be careful, honey. Okay, mom. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pin. The on B. We're pinning it the wrong way. Or how it's gonna go into the sewing machine. There we go. Do, do, do. Oh, and I'm gonna have to stick this back in. I've lost it. Eh, not too bad. Pinch it. Not my Grab it. Okay, do the other side in the same yeah. way. Now, if you want it to be all perfect, you would press it at this point. I'm not too concerned on this bag with pressing it, so I'm not going to. Um, of course, if you're pressing it, I'm using plastic headed pins if it was something I was planning on pressing I would make sure to use my glass headed pins because the um as with acrylic yarn the heat from the iron can melt your pin heads don't want to learn that the hard way okay one more pin Oh, your dolly's getting out of control, honey. Okay. Let's move that over there. We need this back in a moment. Um, we're going to detach my thing so I can use this more as an arm to feed. You can't even see. Um, so I've detached my base so I can use the sewing machine arm here to um, feed the bag around as I sew it. So next we take our bag. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I'm holding up the bag like you can see it. Next we take our bag. Kind of open it up. And kind of... Eh, maybe I wanted one in the middle there too. Yeah, I do. Okay, sorry, I'm going to add two more pins. Just to keep this hem nice and tidy. Okay, so now we're going to be very careful. I'm going to kind of fold this in and then we're going to open it back up and we want to make sure our seams here match up with our bag seams. And then take a couple more pins. Just so it doesn't slide about too much there. And then we'll do the other side. Oh no, I'm doing it totally off of camera. Okay, so I've got my seam here in for my lining. I'm <laughs> Matching it with the seam of my bag. This one's a little more difficult because it's the, the little handle. It's matched up. Of course, it doesn't have to be precise. And we're just going to stick a pin in there so it doesn't slide about too much. And then if you like... Oops, that's caught in there. 
you can Did I completely measure that yeah, incorrectly? Erin from the future, here's where I realized I made a mistake. Um, so I just kind of fudged it. It's uh, crochet work, so, so it doesn't have to be stretched taut or anything. You just make it work on the sewing machine. Going to... Pin this a couple more times just so it doesn't get too crazy on us in the machine. And there we go. Do this side too. this pin. So in my experience, you'll see a lot of people put it crochet or knit side down. That always messes up the feed. Okay. So if you can see the workings of my sewing machine here, there are some feeds here. Whenever I put it knit side down, the feeds are meant to grip the fabric, help it run through the sewing machine. It always grips the knit and it's, it doesn't work for me. So I like to put it in this way. So the smooth fabric is touching the feeds. And uh, we're gonna not start on the small yes, side. We're gonna start on the bigger side. Okay. So what we're going to do is not poke ourselves too much with these needles. How am I gonna get these handles through? Okay, that needle is gonna be a problem. Okay. Let's just start it here. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to put it in your sewing machine and keep the lining matched up at the top as best you can. For this one, for this kind of sewing, I do not drop my foot. So I leave my foot up. You have to be more careful because you're going to have to manually lead it through a bit more. Um, and I don't think you can see at all what I'm doing here. I don't know how to reposition the camera. Um, but basically you want to make Oh, that's my shirt. Can I flip the camera? No, I cannot. Okay. Probably was I can't see. Okay, so here we go. You want to make a little top seam. So if I have it equal with the edge of my feeds, that's an eighth of an inch seam. And that will be right at the top of the bag and that is what we need to do so you just try to keep your fabric and your bag as close together as you can to that line and you're well within your half inch allowance for your fold okay now let's see if i can put this back Well, you're getting more of my pile over there. That's a project. Okay, honey. No, you need to get out of there. Okay. So, this is a little too far back for me. We are in. I'm not going to drop my feed. And we're going to start sewing. There's my pedal. There it is. And we begin. Here we go. The handles are going to be difficult here. Do your best to keep it kind of lined up because you're not going to be able to see 
as well the um the edge of your feet. Got a bump cut in my feet. There we go. Look at that. And keep going. Okay, I'm having to manually push the bumps through my feet a little more. Again, with a, a sewn-in lining on a bag like this, you are not going to see it very much. So if you're not perfectly lined up, perfectly straight, it's not going to be that much of an issue. Okay, we're coming up to the short handle here. That's where I started. I'm gonna reverse this a little bit, and then we are going. To... Okay, so are we? Yeah, okay. So I finished it. We're going to pull that out. And to snip our threads, we are going to uh, how cute is that okay sorry you can't even see what I'm doing okay so we need to trim off our excess sewing threads so one issue when you don't put your um, foot down like I was leaving it up is your the sewing machine tension will be off and the length of your stitches here will vary again it's it's a bag for my personal use i'm not going to be too very concerned with that but look at that we now have a nice lined check to make sure i didn't do that hi hi we have a nice lined japanese knot bag Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my first foray into tutorial making. I hope to do more in the future and work on my setup. Um, I did have a little bit of difficulty uh, trying to see what was in frame. So I hope enough was in frame. Okay, I will see you all later. Bye-bye.